All right. So in the previous video, we talked about how to find your location using um, using triangulation or uh, resectoring resecting uh, your location. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how do you express this um, so that other people know where you're at. And so we're going to use co the coordinates to this. Now, back in the first videos, if you remember, we talked about the function of a compass is to help you find your position on your map. And you can do this with your compass quite, quite easily. Um, or you can, alternatively, you can do this with a tool called a grid square. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, uh, for point of reference, I'm going to use UTM coordinates because it works better from a land navigation standpoint. Uh, what you might be more familiar with or heard of is longitude and latitude. Now, in, at the beginning of this series, we talked about this particular map being a seven and a half minute map, which means it covers um, a territory of longitude of seven and a half minute, minutes. And that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for people. What would be easier is to be able to express where I'm at on this grid reference based off of a unit of measure that we're familiar with. I'm going to use UTM coordinates, which basically uses or does use uh, the metric system. So it's going to be in meters. So I'm going to be so many meters within a grid. Within a grid. Think about it that way. So UTM uh, works well for na land navigation because what it does is it basically takes... Um, so in longitude and latitude, it kind of follows the curvature of the Earth. In, in land navigation, we're talking about smaller areas. It's easier to think about our grids without having to worry about that curvature. So we take Earth, turn it into basically a, a can-shaped Earth, and then put grids all over there. And then there's about 60 grids. And if we're using those 60 grids, they create zones. And those zones give us the ability to reuse numbers again. So it's not like a unique global system. Uh, everything is separated into those zones. And there's so many zones in America. I think there's like 17-ish or 20-ish. I'm not sure um, exactly, but it doesn't really matter. So you basically have a map that's going to tell you your zone. Now, we also have to worry about our datum, which is, you think of it as, I guess, maybe the language in which you are communicating. Um, and so you want to make sure that when you're communicating your location that you are communicating not longitude and latitude, or not the wrong datum. And so each map will in be indicated which datum they have um, down below here. In this particular instance, it's the, and, and pretty standard is WGS84. Uh, the WGS84 datum is, is what we're going to be working with. Um, next is then we're going to talk about our zone. And, and if you're communicating your location, you say zone. In this particular instance, the map is zone 16. That's going to be an indicator that you're using UTM coordinates. So you don't have to re, you don't have to specifically spell that out. If the search and rescue party wants longitude and latitude, we can talk about that. But most likely, when you're communicating with a GPS uh, or um, a search and rescue party or um, keeping tabs and notes uh, on locations and the maps, it's just much easier and more useful to use the UTM coordinates. Okay. So let's say I am on this lake and I need to find my exact coordinates, all right? So what I'm going to do is um, it, it's already indicated my location. I've already tr uh, used my compass to find my exact location. I want to express that um, in number form, in coordinates form, so that it can be recorded or um, whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look and see for the grid that I'm on. Okay, so every this map is divided out into grids, and they're very hard to see on here, but there's a kind of a faint, kind of grayish line. Not all USGS topographical maps have their UTM grids already in. Some actually are indicated on the side by blue tick marks. If that's the case, then you're going to go to the side, you're going to find your tick mark, and you're going to put your grid in. And I would recommend doing those grids beforehand because it makes it a lot easier. However, it's not always necessary. So I'm going to find my grid that I'm on. And I'm going to draw that out. And again, my lines are already in, so I'm just going to kind of skip the step by putting in. But now you can kind of more visually see the grid that I'm in. 
So if I, at this point I could communicate to a rescue party to say that I'm in I'm in zone 16. Um, we always start with our easting first, and then we go northing. Okay, so we go how far east we are, um, and then how far north we are. So easting would be um, 318 north, um, 5112. And then someone following you on your map is going to take, they're going to go east, okay, 318, all right, north, how far north? 5112. Boom. We got ourselves our grid. And then from there, they're probably going to spe um, speculate or uh, draw out your the grid as well. Okay. Now, when we want to find kind of the more exact position within here. So our easting, as we said, was 318. And actually, let me write this. 318 and our 5112 for how north we are. You know, we'll want to find out how many meters exactly we are within the square, so we'll count those meters by putting the grid overlay onto my grid, and it's going to indicate how many meters we have. So how many meters east? Eight meters east. And how many meters north? Eight meters north. So now I can say specifically 3188 eight, east by 5112 eight north. And Anyone with a grid overlay for UTM is going to be able to do that. Now, what if you don't have a grid overlay? You can still do this. Uh, basically, what you do is you go to your scale and you create a corner rule with a cut um, with a piece of your map, um, notebook paper, whatever you have, and you can basically just take your grid overlay and each one of these marks is a meter. Boom, boom, boom. And I'm going to do the same over here. Mark, meter, 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 meter. And I'm going to do that 10, 10 times because I have um, um, 10, uh, it's a 10 meter square here. Um, so I want 1,000 meters um, all together, right? All the way across and then I'm going to do the same thing so I'll find a corner and then I'll find out how east it is how far east and then how far north so easting then northing and that's how you use a grid overlay okay so in the previous video we talked about uh, dead reckoning and how to find your location based off dead reckoning of either time or pace. Right now what we're going to do is we're going to try, I'm going to show you how you can find your exact location on a map. Let's say you want to mark that location because you want to go back there again. Maybe there's an accident and you're leaving someone behind as you're getting help and you want to find that exact location or maybe there's a buried treasure. Uh, so in this case what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to do this uh, on a trail or a river. Uh, and then I'm going to show you how to do this um, kind of in open land or uh, cross country. So what we're going to do is, let's say we're hiking on this road. And we see this lake here. All right. Now what that means is that we're going to be in, in and around. We're on this road, so we know we're not any farther here. But we're somewhere between this here and this here. And we don't know, we don't see this road right here. So... We want to know kind of how far is it going to be until we get to this to this road essentially. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this lake. It could be a mountaintop, could be a steeple, could be a water tower, any feature that you'd know on that would be that you could find on a map. You're going to take your compass and you're going to shoot an azimuth to that that uh, peninsula on on the lake there, and then you're going to take your compass 
and you're gonna put the edge of your compass, the corner of the compass on that peninsula, or water tower or whatever, and you're gonna move it up the, up the, up the map until your meridian lines have lined up with your grids, grid lines. Once they have, then you can cross with your pencil, with your ruler, and where these two lines intersect the trail and your azimuth that you've shot, intersect is exactly the location that you're at. So you can confirm your precise location based off of any kind of topography that you see in an area. Now let's take, for example, a very common um, scenario, which is a fishing. You're fishing, you want to find, uh, you want to come back to a specific fishing hole that you had found. Well, it's easy enough to mark that with your GPS. Alternatively, uh, you can you can just, let's say you're out in the, on the water here, and you're gonna look for some features. Um, so maybe you find this boat ramp, okay? So you're gonna shoot an azimuth to this boat ramp, all right? And you're gonna do the same thing that we did before, uh, which is basically putting this corner of your map on your the compass on or the corner of the compass on the map where you've shot your location, and then you're going to ro rotate your compass until your meridian lines have lined up with your um, with the grid lines, and then you're going to put a line in. All right. And then we're gonna find another feature. Let's find, maybe this peninsula over here was, looks like a good. So I'm gonna shoot an azimuth to that location, and then I'm gonna put my compass edge on there, and I'm gonna rotate it until my meridian lines have lined up. And then I'm going to put another mark right there. All right, and I can do this a third time and a fourth time, but my location I have found through intersecting sectioning is right here. And I can mark that on my map. And so from any location on the map, if I want to come back to this location here, I can keep that mark. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's say if I'm back on that boat ramp, um, I could, if I come back to that location, I could take my azimuth, uh, I'm sorry, I could plot from the boat ramp to that location. When I get to the boat ramp, I can shoot my azimuth, uh, travel that distance, and if I know my timing of how fast I'm paddling, um, and again, you know, this is why time, understanding time is important, um, then I know I can paddle out so many minutes to this, and I'll be at this destination. I get to this destination, then I can confirm my destination by further taking some more bearings of some other back bearing onto that boat ramp, and then that peninsula again, and maybe this other peninsula, or wherever, just to confirm that I'm exactly where I need to be. Pretty simple to do. So that is called intersection. You can do the same thing if you don't have a clear line of sight. Um, or if you don't have the compass available, you can do the same thing with like a range finder, uh, which we'll do a video on, and that's called translateration. Uh, very, very similar. Um, just basically using resectioning to, to find your location. And, um, and again, it's often com times called tran uh, triangulation, but because there's no angular law of tangents is whatever so it's just not not um it's not technically triangulation